it was a good point. Yeah, we we were still conversing on the way home. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm not a I'm I'm a different kind of kid. No, I, I never um I like who would say, man, I didn't taste enough time chasing the skirt. You know, I had things I had to rehearse. I was playing ball with my friends, doing stuff with my friends, and, and living life. And if you ran into girls along the way, that that happened. But I didn't go stock and have migratory patterns to where I went where I knew certain girls would be. And, and no, I didn't do nothing like that. No, I was never obsessed with a girl. I mean, I, would, I had girls I crushed on, but we would, like, run into each other, and then I would not talk to them and run away. I don't even run away, but I would just, yeah, no, I wasn't. And then if we had girls in our in our social network, then I talked with them and flirted with them, and they would give me hints, and I would not get it. And <laughs> yeah, I would like to date you. Really? I was unaware of that. <laughs> I never, yeah, you, a lot of girls I knew in high school are like, he was dumb. He would, I mean, you practically had to, like, throw your clothes off and take the panties off and lay, Rhonda Brown had the right method with him, yeah, just take your clothes off and lay there on the bed and say, you want to have sex now? Yeah, sounds like a plan. She could have just, you know, yeah, girls had to practically, well, the thing, that's what happened with Tara, you know, she was like, well, she's like to be your girlfriend. Oh, I, okay, but she was dating, and that was horrible. I, was, I had a rough time with stuff with women and, and relationships and stuff like that because I, I, my dad said you know <laughs> if a woman's into you she'll let you know which they do and um but I'm not I'm, I'm very not aggressive when it comes to women I've been finally learning how to and I'm in my 40s to come up and, and, and articulate uh, certain kind of feelings and emotions to women and about women but you know I <sighs> they usually would come talk to me we'd be friends that's how I met. I told you, Maria came up and asked me, you know, you she hang out and you talk with the, the black women are really into you. And you say, yeah, yeah, I'm a grown woman. And okay. <laughs> yeah. And then when me and Jan started talking, she was from Philly and I was the only other person in the classroom at ASU that had any kind of a Philly type personality that she could converse with. It was like, do you understand what the man, the hell this man's saying either? <laughs> Professor Sir Gill. He was a Rhodes Scholar and he used a lot of words that uh, were outside of a lot of our vernacular. <laughs> Do you know what he was saying? I think what he was trying to talk about was this, but I don't know, because he lost me about halfway through, whatever. Well, because he's not talking, talking in my area, he's not speaking in my vernacular in my area. I think he's trying to encourage me to go try to figure out what these words are, but he's losing me, and so I'm not learning as much in his class as I do in Professor Barnes's class. So I'm kind of bored in this class, too. So we started talking. <laughs> That's how me and John Delay met. Yeah, we had Professor Sorgel's class today. He was a really good guy, and I could follow a lot of things, especially the stuff when he talked about Luther and translating the uh, Bible into vulgar text so people could better understand it from, instead of the elites having it. But then his classroom was like, um, you want to translate your uh, lectures into the vulgar text so the lay people could better understand it? <laughs> That's what I would think. I'd just sit there and laugh. And then I remember my videos of, i got to watch that tonight, Malcolm X. Yeah, Malcolm was like, you know, I speak in the vernacular so that people can comprehend what I'm trying to get across to them. So that's cool. So I'll get it. <laughs> Most good teachers do that. It's like Einstein said, if you can't explain things simply, then you don't want to know it well enough. So you're trying to express to other people that you know it real well when you're not even confident of the fact that you really know what you're expressing too well. So that's, that's it. <laughs> I love you too. Man, you're fun to talk to. Gosh, I love you, Mr. Lopez. I think uh, that'd be cool if we could meet. I mean, I'll understand if we never do, but just know that if we if we never do, I was I wanted to. I really did. Yeah, no, we didn't get along when we first met. We, he was talking about that when I was leaving the library. It's like, yeah, you sucking up, trying to suck up to Jennifer Lopez. No, I mean, me and him couldn't stand each other when I first started telekinesis with him. <laughs> Let me explain. <laughs> She's had this, you know how guys are never really good enough for your daughters, but, you know, the other daughters aren't, huge public figures and so it's a little easier to have a, a relationship when you're not a megastar who everybody wants to screw and everybody wants to screw your man. So they had relationships that were a little bit easier to work with so her dad, Mr. Lopez, could be a little bit more happy with her and they had kids and do, and so then there's Jenny who, you know, and doesn't seem to ever make her, it's like any guy she brings home never makes her dad happy because, you know, <laughs> yeah, that's I like that, you like that too on, on Out of Sight. Yeah. <laughs> their, their dad, or the guy who plays their dad, when he sits there and talks to uh, Michael Keaton's character, he goes, isn't that, I love that part, that's my favorite part in the whole movie, it's 
freaking hilarious, man. She gets in because <laughs> they're a gun. Pr yeah, that's cool, too. But, yeah, that is very funny. But, yeah, that, I like that movie. I do like that movie. It's, 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 it's a good one. It's, I like it a lot. I think Clooney and Cheadle and all the guys are really, really good in it. Not to mention your daughter. Yeah, she's a fair actress. She she did pretty good in it. Yeah, I like Cheadle, you know, a lot. He's one of my favorite actors. But yeah. <laughs> I thought Steve Zahn kind of stole the show, too. Steve Zahn is freaking hilarious. <laughs> he's a funny guy. He is, man. He's good in Sahara, too. He's good as Cowboy Wayne in Saving Silverman. Yeah, Steve Zahn is an underrated actor, man. Steve Zahn is one of the best actors in the whole history of the world, man. <laughs> Thanks, Steve. Oh, yeah, I, I, I'll go. You like Steve Zahn a lot? I like you, too. I mean, you are funny. No, you are one of my favorites. I'm loyal to my friends. <laughs> it's me. I'm Cowboy Wayne. I, oh, you're, you're funny. Oh, no way. How's it going, man? Oh, that's right. I got to talk to your dog. You've been, you know him in it. You know Marshall? I, I think, sir. Okay, thanks for doing that. Um, I love you, too. They, okay, you leave me with these two crazy men. Okay, how you doing, man? Steve's on and Eminem. What up, dude? I completely forgot, man. I forgot I told you I was going to talk to you tonight. Dude, I, I get distracted. It's Lopez's dad, man. <laughs> Have you seen she's fine? Okay, I was... Not that. It's not that. It's just, you know, she's... It's not... He's cool. Have you ever talked... you ever talked boxing with the dude in football? He knows all the dudes back in the day, Wendell Ty And he corrects me on that. So does Robert Nice. Well, they also have Freddie Solomon, Dwight Clark, Don't Forget the Catch, Don't Forget This. They also have Wendell Tyler. But, uh, yeah, he tells you about all the, the, the great players that played for those San Francisco teams. It wasn't just Joe Montana. It wasn't just Roger Craig. It just wasn't Tyler and Rice. At first, it was Solomon and Clark. And now there's, yeah, Freddie Solomon was a really good receiver. Number 88, yeah, Dwight Clark, the catch in the corner. Yeah, I know. Okay. Yeah, they just keep rolling. I mean, Wendell Tyler did also play for the Rams, right? Okay. <laughs> he knows this. Lawrence McCutcheon was the yeah, end. And then, okay, my favorite writer, Chuck Foreman, he plays for the Minnesota Vikings. And there was also McClanahan, Brett McClanahan. That's right. Okay. See, he remembers all these names. I forgot Brett McClanahan. Um, John Otis was the fullback for Terry and the Metcalf for the St. Louis Cardinals when they had Jim Hart, Mel Gray, and um, God, I'm, I'm not going to get it. They had a white receiver who was really good, but I can't remember what his name was. He was really, really good. It was kind of like uh, they had a kind of tandem that reminded you a lot in the way that they played and the way that St. Louis used in the same way the Raiders used Branch and Belitnikoff. That was one of the best receiver combos of all time. But if you go through receiver combos, you've got to mention Branch and Belitnikoff. You didn't say Branch and Belitnikoff. Branch and Belitnikoff was, oh, Mr. Mr. Hands and Mr. Speed. Holy crap, those two were awesome. Oh, yeah, they were. And not to mention Steve Largent with anybody else who lined up on the opposite side of the ball with him, too. Had Sam McCollum and, oh, God, who's some of the other uh, name of the receivers that played it with a judge. You, you really benefited from the fact that people had trouble finding out where. It was fun watching Largent play because the cornerback would be, like, turning around. Where would he go? You'd see him. He'd be, like, lost. And Largent would be standing in the corner of the end zone catching a touchdown pass. You'd be like, how do you do that? And you look, and it's like some shake little move that he did. He's, he was cool, man. Steve Largent was one of the coolest receivers ever played in the NFL. He just, he wasn't the fastest. He wasn't the biggest. He wasn't, he couldn't jump that high. But he just had this way of getting open and making cornerbacks like, how, how do you do that? Shit. <laughs> Steve Largent. And Jim Zorn was fun and cool, too. I met Jim Zorn. He came to a football banquet and talked about Jesus the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, my boy coach, one of our coaches says, ah, he's a really good football player, but he's a lousy banquet speaker. <laughs> We're there to football, talk about football, and talk about Jesus. I mean, uh, you know, that's neat that you found a relationship with Jesus and everything like that, but could you talk about football? <laughs> Funny. He was a nice guy. He was very, very, very zealous about his new relationship with Jesus that he shared to follow us for about 30 minutes. Yeah, it was cool. I liked him. I thought he was a good guy. I thought he was a really good quarterback. Not a good football banquet speaker. No, no, you've been better at church. <laughs> Funny. Yeah, Coach Pine, I mean, he, he, that was the one time me and him were like, yeah, dude, I was with you on that, man. I mean, I wanted to hear about football, Sherman Smith and <laughs> Keith Sims, and, yeah, I wanted to talk about that kind of stuff. And Sherman Smith, Keith Sims, I remember that. Yeah, they were good. Good teams, Coach, yeah, okay, well, all right, man, yeah. <laughs> I eat the other. Yeah, it's funny. Um, <laughs> sometimes there are certain things that are important to us that aren't always quite as important to people, but it's when you show up to talk about something, talk about what you came with to talk about. Shut up, man. 
I get distracted. People do that to me. Man, it works like this to me. I'm going to smack you in. I'm going to Marshall, 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 Marshall. Don't make me, I'm going to hurt you. <laughs> I love you too, man. How you feeling? Steve's on, man. You like him too? He makes me laugh too. You're funny, man. Oh, dude, man. Saving Silverman is one of my favorite movies of all time. <laughs> since, since, yeah, since Judith, our fun level has gotten <laughs> and whacking off. <laughs> God, that was so funny. Oh, I love that movie. It's one of my favorites. Sandy Perkins is hot. I agree with you on that one. Yeah, the girl who plays Sandy Perkins is hot. She's, oh, yeah. She's blonde. Don't matter to me. She has that kind of a Faye Dunaway kind of vibe about her with the, yeah, oh, it's, you know, whoa. She's, well, yeah. Sandy Perkins, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. She has a, yeah, Hillary Duff kind of thing about yeah, Hillary Duff makes us both. Yeah, she does make my slinky go, but doing, doing, doing. But I don't, that's what we were talking about with Mr. Lopez. I don't owe oh, women. I don't. Women, you know, they all hear about it on my video feed. Yeah, I was looking at her, oh, my God. But as a human being, she didn't even know I was looking at her. They probably didn't. He noticed me. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, the beautiful black woman today at the library. Yeah, there was one, and she had an orange thing that said pink on the back, and then the other young ladies, the other two young ladies came in, very beautiful, wearing shorts, one in black, big smiles, very gorgeous. Yeah, I noticed. Did I sit there and ogle them? No. Did they even notice that, that I noticed that they were there? Probably not. They were busy talking, and I wasn't sitting there going, oh, girl, you got a nice Denetroy booty. I didn't do anything like that. Did I notice? Yeah, technically I did. Well, the one girl had pink on her tail. You know, so you can't help but notice when they got big writing on their butt. You, okay, your butt ain't pink, girl. It's brown. You should have brown written on your butt and not pink. <laughs> That's funny. Thanks, Zon and I did not so expect you to show up with Steve Zahn, man. That was of all people you stole up with Steve Zahn. I thought you were gonna show up with Dre or somebody. You, you know, all those brothers you have on your thing. You show up with a comedian. Yeah, a, a, a actor, comedian slash what? What are you, man? You're just a very funny guy who likes to make people smile. I agree. Say, what about you? No, you don't. You always cussing people out and making them all mad and being all angry and flipping people off. I know you. <laughs> oh, you want to have more fun? Hang out with us, man. We'll teach you how to have fun. Come on. Let's go, man. Come on, Marshall. Let's go, Marshall. Marshall matters. He does, man. <laughs> matters. I know it's that. I just Marshall matters. We just joke. Eminem. We get. To, we we and we just dog. We just haven't. He has. He, no, we're not going to jump off of a roof or spend ourselves on a ceiling with bungee cords with, with, with a thong on in here. No. Could we get Hillary Duff to do that? That sounds... She's, she's kind of young. She's old enough to be not young enough. Now, it's true that. She's over seven. That was a long time ago. She's a very pretty girl. I agree. And so is Sandy Perkins. I, and, yeah, you think the same thing about Kate Hudson that I'm thinking. She pretty. Yeah, I agree. So you like those kind of blondes? I kind of figured that. Yeah, I found them attractive in my life, too. Oh, yeah, that's right. No, I got nothing against blondes. And everybody thinks that, too. It's why he doesn't like blondes. What did say? Oh, I didn't say I didn't like blondes. I just didn't say, which, okay, what if they're too white? No, I don't think anybody's too white. What? Have you seen my ex-wife and ever talked to her? She's fucking too white. <laughs> Amy is white. She just does. She just looks kind of black. Oh, that woman's so white, it's just not even funny. Oh, God, she's whiter than white. <laughs> yeah, you may. <laughs> Definitely the same thing, man. She's funny. Yeah, you, <laughs> that's true. I forgot about that, Marshall. Thanks, man. <laughs> when you came into my house when I got married to and uh, Stephanie, right? You walked in, and everybody would be like, that's all the white guy stuff, and that's all the black girl stuff. What? Yeah. The Pat O'Batten, the Oswald, the Jazz, the, the you know, Walter Beasley, the... Keep the Doc Powell and everything over there and the Gerald Albright and the not, you know, that's all my stuff. Okay. Yeah. Steve Perry, Journey, yeah. Grace Jones, all the black people, white people stuff. Yes, yeah, she's the black person, white person over there. I'm the white person, black person. <laughs> yes. I mean, yeah, I'm the one with the Nita Baker and the, yeah. The, the, it's just what I like. George Benson, I was really into George Benson. Everybody who's anybody had really gets into George Benson and Earl Cole, especially George, man. I love Earl Cole, too, but I love George's stuff with Tony LaPuma and, or, yeah, Living Inside Your Love, Mask with the, Mike, Michael Jordan's right. That was, that, those, yeah. Some good albums, man. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Breezing. Six to four. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, lady. Oh, come on. 
boom, 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 boom. Yeah, Affirmation, one of the best songs of all time. Hey, say Feliciano can write a really good jazz too. They have some good stuff, and, and George tears it up. And the keyboards on that, yeah, are off the hook. You see the... <laughs> People that are into hip-hop like jazz. They sample jazz to hip-hop, too. It inspires them. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Reason inspires people to do hip hop. Yes, it does, man. Are we really happy here with this lonely game we play? Searching for words to say, searching but not finding understanding anyway. Doesn't that make you inspire you to want hip hop? We're lost in a masquerade. Both afraid to say we're just too far away. You don't think Mars will be into this stuff. White guys ain't supposed to listen to this stuff. From being close together from the start. Didn't the white guy write that song? Isn't that like Leon Russell or somebody like that that wrote this masquerade? I think so. Yeah. Is it Leon Russell, the brother that <laughs> Lady Blue? We're going to be really close to you. Doing something making love to you. Listen real close to me, lady. You just wait and see, baby. I got a whole lot of love to give you. <laughs> that song is the shit. Lady Blue, my mom loved that song. That song is like, oh, up up on the high wire. <laughs> Dang, you got some, you're, you're somewhere in your mom's little things with your uncles and everything like that. You got some real good shit to listen to inspire you to start talking and expressing how you felt, huh? I know you get into say yeah, everybody gets into some art music and shit, especially white. That's standard issue. White people in the suburbs and the any burbs, any burbs, or burbs. If you live, you into Bob Seger? He's from Detroit. <laughs> I like my favorite song of his is um, my best friend in the service really loved Bob. His favorite song was Down on Main Street, and that's a damn good song. But my favorite was Night Moves, I think. Still the one is good too. That song is just shit. Still the one, baby, baby, still the same. Still the same. That was it. Still the same. Still the same. Is, is Boss Gang from Detroit? I'm just kidding around. He has a Detroit vibe to him. I like Boss Gang a lot too. Baby's in the run around, hanging with the crowd, putting your business in the street, talking out loud. That's hip hop. Yeah. <laughs> Saying you bought it, this and that. How much you done, Spain? I swear she must believe it's all heaven sent. Hey, boy, you better bring the check around. Lesson of sad, face the sad, sad truth of the dirty low down. This is coming. Ooh, I wonder, 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 wonder who taught her how to talk like that. Yeah, <laughs> that song is the shit. JoJo is also, yeah, that's one of my favorite boss gags. JoJo likes them Broadway lights, flashing lights. You know him. <laughs> that's so, JoJo, $8.50. That song is the shit, man. Boss Gags was like the, he's like the blackest white dude. My buddy, my, one of my friend's buddies said that too. He's like, man, I love Boss Gags, man. Boss Gags had this soulfulness about him that all the brothers were like, damn, that shit is good. Like Bobby Caldwell. Bobby Caldwell was, ba -da -da -da. oh, man, what you want to do for love? And then he does other, uh, you know, he does crooner tunes like, you know, the, 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 lately I've noticed my world's come under. <laughs> I know my world's a mess. Cause all my clothes need pressing. <laughs> stuck in the shattered, I'm stuck on you. <laughs> I love that song. I gotta get playing my vocal jazz. Eh? You're right. You you're deeper than people think, right? You got more shit working on up in there. You ever heard Nancy Wilson? Do you want to? I'm just kidding. She's the coolest man. You got a lot of stuff because you grew up. Yeah, your friend's house. Yeah, you go to your friend's house. You listen to stuff you ain't never listened to before. That's how I got into Marvin Gaye more and into uh, James Brown and Al Green. The Cunninghams. I'm so tired of being alone. I'm so tired. I heard that the other day when I was feeling down. I connected to me president, man. He really likes Al Green. I'm really into Al Green. Won't you help me, girl, just as soon as you can? We used to sing that in the back. <laughs> sing it real loud. Some people say, I got a way of making you love me. But you didn't go for that. It's a natural fact. I don't want to come back. Show me where it's, hey, is that, I can't hit those. I'm so tired of being alone, I'm so tired. It's a standard issue in Detroit, right? You got, everybody's got Al Green, man. <laughs> Shit. Let's stay together, loving you where the, where the times are good or bad. Uh, they're from Detroit, right? Uh, no, they're from Flint. Switches from Flint, right? Are they from Flint? Where are you, are they from 
are the DeBarges from somewhere like Flint or something like that? They're from Michigan, right? Yeah, they're from Michigan, too. Yeah, there's a lot of talented people from Michigan. <laughs> I like Michigan. It's one of my favorite things. Gaines, that's right. We were talking about that with Mr. Before I got up in <laughs> Mr. <laughs> I never got up in anybody's Kool-Aid with their boyfriends and all that. That was the macho thing. Till Gaines, my dog from Detroit, said, go ask her for her digits, man. <laughs> Girl, you hook me up with the digits. I went, what? Digits. You got digits? Can I, can I call you sometime? What? Your phone number. Can I get your phone number? I have a boyfriend. I didn't ask for his phone number. <laughs> Here, here's mine. In case you ever want to give me a call and you're ever free. And your boyfriend called me that night. <laughs> I'm like, just throw it away. <laughs> it's like, shit. If you didn't want it and you really didn't want any attention from me, why you want attention from me like that? And then he's got to get up in my Kool-Aid. You should have known the brother that talks like this and hangs out with the brother from Detroit wasn't going to sit there and go, oh, you're going to come over to my house and karate chop me? I'll just take a two bar for it and crack it over your fucking lion's skull. What do you want to talk about next? <laughs> and then he was like, my dad told me not to believe liars and to kick their ass anytime they come around and try to come up with you in your face with illegit shit. And the poor kid's all like, well, it's not like that, man. It's all about, okay, what else do you want to talk about? <laughs> then he was like, whoa, this guy don't play. Dude, it's my best friend from Detroit. <laughs> I'm just kidding around. Me and Gaines weren't like that. We didn't go around looking for confrontation. If people brought it to us, we threw it back. For the most part, like when those dogs from Moon Valley were sitting there breakdancing, and Reggie, our dog from New York, goes started talking shit, and he's like, "You see what they say when they talk for New York? Yeah, they go and kick our ass and say New York." <laughs> we made Gaines about Reggie. Don't do that. Reggie was a good guy, but you don't use that New York. I'm from New York bullshit. And because that brother looked at the brother from Moon Valley was like huge, and he looked at him like, "What? You talking shit?" And we're like, "No, he ain't talking shit." All right, that's so good. And well, there was like eight of them and three of us. <laughs> nah, <laughs> we ain't talking shit, man. Nah, it's all good. It's all right, man. There's some good breakdance moves there. You look real tight, man. I, we'll see you. What the fuck you doing, man? <laughs> that was us when we hung out. We talked. This. Me and Marsha ain't black one of these. We just hung out with these were just our dogs and when we're comfortable with our dogs, this is how we talk. And it's just a comfortable way of being when we're around people we're comfortable with. And it's it's not an assimilation. You know how people a lot of times that hang out and are raised in the South. When you live in the South, when I was in North Carolina, you pick up a kind of country train, you don't even realize it. And when you're raised in a Hispanic speaking community, you say things like chit and chair and you pick up a kind of a Spanish accent after a while when you're speaking it mostly with Spanish speakers. It just happens, man. It's just like it is. And then you just roll in the vernacular, you're snapping you and capping you. You're right on. Okay, you see what I'm saying? So it's just the people that we hung out with, and it's where we feel comfortable hanging out with our people and how we engage in the vernacular. Right on. Tell what you're cool. I'll be right back. We'll be back with more Eminem after these messages. I'm just kidding. We'll be right back, man. This is fun. I love you, too. I got to go give me a drink or shit. No, my head's a little buzzy in on it. It's all right. I'm pretty good. No, nah, I'm really, you're excited? I'm excited, too. I like talking to you. We haven't talked this much. All right, I'll be back. I love you, too. Blessings and peace.